Hello Abbey Woodworkers, Mayanna here with Heartwood Art. Today I'm going to show you how I built the frame for my miter saw station bench. The trouble I ran into, how I cleverly fixed it, and I'll show you how I mounted the caster securely. So stay tuned. Hey, if you're enjoying this miter saw station build, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and come on over to Heartwood Art where you can watch the thing being built step by step. Okay, let's dive in. Uh, please see the previous posts and videos in this series for how I built the individual legs shown here. Now, before I assembled each leg frame, I drilled the pocket holes at the bottom of each of the 2x4s that I would use later to mount the casters. Now, unfortunately... The legs were too thick to use in my K4 Craig jig, but the K3 Craig jig worked perfectly. Now I positioned the K3 so that it was not too close to the edge and held it in place with the clamp while I drilled the first hole on the left entry hole of the jig. Now I found out really fast that I needed to hold the clamp and jig in place to keep it from slipping around. And then I moved the jig over just a bit and drill from the other hole entry about the same distance from the edge on the other side. And then I repeated these steps for both sides of the leg bottoms. Next, I laid two of the legs on the floor notched side up. Then I laid the six foot apron two by four into the notches and ensured it was square on both sides. Now it's time to drill the pilot holes. And come on over to Hardwood Art and see my pose for why to use the right drill bit and countersink when drilling pilot holes. Now I used my Ryobi impact driver for this task and wow, did it ever get those screws in fast. It uses a star bit and I'm driving two and a half inch construction screws for this. And here's one of the finished leg frame assemblies. Now it's on to build the second leg frame. And I'm going to jump ahead in the build a bit to show you why I decided to turn each bench leg so that the notched area faced outward. This setup yielded maximum width on the bottom shelf and top too. And now I'm ready to add the stretcher boards to connect the two leg assemblies together. I leaned one against the pole support in my garage workshop and tied it with a little cord. And then I did the same for the one on the right using my sawhorses as braces. And I had already drilled pocket holes into each end of the stretcher boards. And as you can see, they're being held in place with clamps on three corners. And then I have a special Craig right angle clamp in the lower corner. There is just no better way to hold two boards together when attaching pocket hole screws than this Craig right angle clamp. Now once I have one screw in above the clamp, I removed it and installed the second screw. And then I removed the regular clamp on the right and repeated the process with the Craig clamp to ensure it was squarely held in place. Then it was just a matter of repeating the process for the top stretcher boards on the ends of both sides. You know, and it's starting to look a lot like a bench frame at this point too. But take a good look at the top apron board on the left. It was warped and bowed out and damned that green lumber and then here's another shot of the nearly three-quarter inch gap on the middle stretcher. Now, without having long enough bar clamps to pull the opposing stretcher boards closer together, I had to get pretty inventive with how I was going to fix this. And here's my solution. I flipped the frame on its side and put a 2x4 directly under the lower side of where the stretcher would attach. And then I sat on top of it and leaned over to put my whole weight on the bowed apron board. And let me tell you, it was not at all easy to line up where that stretcher should be, keep it square, and drill the pocket hole screw in either. But once I had the first one, the apron board was not as bowed, and that made the second one easier. And this is the completed base turned upside down and ready for me to install casters. Now the plan was to cut rectangles of scrap three quarter inch plywood to mount onto the bottom of the legs and then mount the casters on the other side. And that way, I would not be drilling the caster mounting screws directly into the end grain of the legs, which is the weakest way to connect that particular piece of the whole assembly. And you can watch my leg build video 
for why you don't want to drill into the end grain and why I chose pocket holes instead. Now, that Craig Right Angle Clamp sure came in handy again for this step. And it was a cinch to drill the pocket holes through the bottom of the legs into the three quarter inch plywood base. And I used one and a half inch pocket hole screws. And here's how I chose my caster bolts. Now first, they had to fill the entire hole of the caster mount so there would be little chance of wobble. And regular wood screws are too thin for this, hence the need for a lag bolt or AKA a lag screw. Now second, I only wanted the tip to pierce the end grain of the leg, else the lag bolt could hit the pocket screws. Now actually, on two of the legs, that did happen, but only on one bolt each. So I have two casters that only have three bolts fully tightened down, and that's fine. Next, I taped the bit I would use to pre-drill so that I wouldn't go too deep with the hole and avoid hitting those pocket hole screws. And I didn't bother with the exact measurements. I just eyeballed the center placement for the caster mount. Then I pre-drilled one hole, put in a lag bolt, and secured it to hold the caster while I pre-drilled the hole diagonally across from it. Now once I stuck a screw into that second hole, that caster wouldn't move until I finished with the other two holes. And here's a close-up of the finished lower frame with the caster. And you can also see that mounting my stretcher boards on the inside made it super easy to install the plywood for the lower shelf. I didn't have to cut a notch for the legs. And here's the finished frame with that lower shelf installed. So to see the rest of this miter saw station build, be sure to subscribe to the Heartwood Art YouTube channel and come on over to Heartwood Art and subscribe to my newsletter so you never miss a post.